When the weather starts to cool down, is there anything better than a big old bowl of chili? I don't think so. And while there's a million different ways to make it, I just happen to have a little leftover smoked brisket, so I'm gonna give you my take. Let's start off by knocking out a little prep. Sound good? Let's cook. And my recipe isn't all that hard to make. It's all about following the procedures and taking the time to cook each ingredient to maximize the overall flavor. But first, we have to talk about beans. And sorry, Texas, this is not a Texas style chili. Love beans in my chili. I'm gonna use dried beans because as we cook them, it's gonna bring out more bean flavor and make my chili that much more delicious. Now, I have two cups of kidney beans and one cup of chickpeas. Yes, I love chickpeas in my chili. If you are using canned, totally fine. You're going to need about three 15 ounce cans of drained dark kidney beans and about one to one and a half cans of drained chickpeas. Now, we would normally soak these overnight, but another really quick trick is adding boiling water right over the top of each of these, making sure to cover them by three to four inches and letting them sit for one hour. Once you've added the water in there, just set those containers to the side. Now for the onions. I have four medium to large size yellow onions. You could use reds, you could use whites, you could even use sweet onions here. After you've peeled them and cut off the ends, just roughly chop them, large dice them. It doesn't matter, they're going to cook down. Now I know it seems like this is quite a bit of onions, but I promise after they're caramelized and browned up, we're maybe only gonna have a cup to a cup and a half left. And for a little fun bonus, we're gonna render some bacon fat and cook all the vegetables in that. So I've got eight to 10 strips here. I know that may seem like a lot, but I'm Italian. I cook for the neighborhood, I can't help myself. But if you go to my website and you put your cursor over the serving amount, you can slide it up or down, scale the serving size, make it work for you. All we're looking to do here is julienne or thinly slice up these eight to 10 bacon strips. Now head over to a very large pot or a Dutch oven. We're gonna add the bacon in there over low to medium heat. All we're looking to do here is render the bacon fat and make sure the lardons are crispy and assume the position with your hand on the hip. All right, once the bacon is nice and brown, we're gonna use a slotted spoon and just set them to the side in a container. Back over to that pot, let's add all of those onions in here. We're looking at in between 60 and 75 minutes. You heard it right, I know that might sound crazy, but I promise you, if you take the time to do this, it's going to further enhance the flavor of this chili. We're going to frequently stir it. All right, Comey's, a few thoughts, a few substitutions here. If that much rendered bacon fat freaks you out, take half of it out, save it for another recipe, or you can just substitute with butter if you don't have bacon. And lastly, if you don't have any smoked brisket like I'm gonna use, this is when you start off with your ground beef or your ground sirloin or even your sirloin cubes. You sear it first in the pan, get them nice and brown, take them out. There should be plenty of fat left over in there to then cook your onions. But this is great timing because now we can get started on prepping up all of our vegetables. I've got one each red and yellow bell pepper. The best way I know how to trim them is sort of just cut around the pith and seed, slice off the bottom. We're going to small to medium dice both of these. And then for garlic, for some reason, I don't have a problem with cutting it anymore. Maybe I'll go back to the garlic press shortly, but we are gonna finally mince up six to eight garlic cloves, set them in the same bowl. And don't forget to go back to those onions. Like I said, stir frequently, it's starting to look really good and the smell is absolutely incredible right now. And then for my so-called spicy peppers, I've got a poblano pepper, which really isn't spicy at all, and a couple of jalapenos. Now, if you love heat, you love spice, oh my gosh, use more jalapenos. Use a serrano, use a red finger, use some habaneros. You can even add in the pith if you absolutely love heat. For me, I'm going to take out the seeds in the pith, remove a lot of that heat, and then just small dice it up. For the poblano pepper, we are gonna cut this just like our bell peppers, only there's really three sides instead of four, so we're gonna need to trim out the seeds and the pith. Again, small dice these. For the jalapeno, slice off the end, slice it in half, and then what we wanna do is sort of fillet out the pith, so be careful with your fingers. And then we are also going to small dice these. I know you're probably thinking, why are you taking so much time? It's great practice. Things look so much more beautiful when all the shapes and sizes are uniform. And then last, but certainly not least with the vegetables, what is that super important base that I use to every single soup that I make? Mirepoix, onions, celery, and carrots. Do not let that scare you. I promise you the flavors you're gonna pull from there are going to be super good and make this chili very, very tasty. All right. 
What we're gonna do is just peel these carrots and then finely, finely mince them and then do the same thing with the celery. I'm going to quickly peel up three medium-sized carrots and for the peelings, this is awesome for stock. So just pop them in the freezer until you're ready to use them. For the carrots, we just want to roughly chop them. In fact, you could probably throw the three ribs of celery in here with that. Or if you want to save even more time, just put it all in the food processor. For me, I'm already too far in the process. They're chopped by hand. Going in a bowl with the carrots and peppers and garlic. Let's go over, check out our onions. Yes, this is what we want. Caramelized, loaded with flavor, it's now time. Let's add all of this goodness in here. What we're gonna do is turn the heat up from low medium more up to medium heat because what we want to do is saute these for about eight to 10 minutes max. And really quick, do not worry that we turn the heat up to medium. There's enough moisture in the onion and the carrots and the peppers to help protect those onions. They're not gonna push any further or burn them. But what we do wanna do is get all those additional ingredients we just add up a bit browned up. You definitely want to frequently stir maybe every two minutes or so, so nothing is sticking or burning. This looks perfect. We're at a really solid stage. Now in the meantime, let's grab our beans. They've been soaking for about 90 minutes at this point. Even though you only need an hour, we're gonna drain the kidney beans and chickpeas all in the same strainer. Give them a quick rinse, get any of that old water off of there. They are going right into that pot. What we're gonna do is give them a quick stir, still over medium heat. We're going to toast it. It's not gonna get brown or anything, but it's almost like cooking rice before you add in the liquid. And let's talk spices for a second while those beans are toasting up. I like a combination of chili powder, cumin, oregano, and for sweetness, some brown sugar. For chili powder, if you have a favorite brand out there or you even wanna make a combination of your own, you know, it's usually like chili powder, onion, garlic, paprika, some herbs. If you want some more spice, you can add cayenne. I'm gonna start off with about a quarter cup. I'm sure I'm gonna add a little bit more throughout the process, but for now, a quarter cup's gonna do. Next, cumin. I'm using three tablespoons of ground cumin, gonna add some nice earthy tones. Then oregano, three tablespoons. Love oregano in here, really makes the flavors nice. Then last, brown sugar. I got two tablespoons for a little bit of sweetness. So about another minute or two for those beans, we're gonna add these in there and toast it up just for a minute or so. Let's go have a look at our beans. And this recipe seems to be so much about stirring, seeing where we're at and seeing if we're ready to add in more ingredients. Well, we are at that point. So we are gonna add in that quarter cup of chili powder, the three tablespoons of ground cumin, three tablespoons of dried oregano, and two tablespoons of packed light brown sugar. Let's stir in all that goodness and try to get a little toast on this for maybe just two minutes or so. All right, when it comes to tomatoes, we're almost ready to add those in there. If you're in season, I've got a garden loaded full of beautiful tomatoes. I've got two really large ones here I can use, or about four cups or 28 ounces of whole peeled tomatoes. This is great in the off season, in those winter months, if that's what you wanna use. This part is totally up to you. Just going to quickly remove the stem here. I'm peeling them, you don't have to. I'm just a little bit more anal, I guess. And if you wanted to do it quicker, drop them in some hot water and chill them like in my steak pizza Iola recipe. We're gonna roughly chop them. There's so much juice on the cutting board. So I'm taking the whole thing over there and scraping all that goodness right into our pot of chili. Next, adding four cups of really good beef stock. This is going to help cook our beans and add a lot of flavor. Let's turn the heat up and bring it to a boil for a few minutes. And now for probably the most important ingredient, the beef. I've got about five pounds of leftover smoked brisket from the other day. The flavors from this should make this chili very good, very interesting. Now, if you happen to have a leftover smoked tri-tip, beef ribs, uh, a ribeye, smoked primer, whatever it is, that is good to use right now, okay? But what we wanna do is trim the fat a little bit because we still have a couple minutes before our beans are to a boil and starting to soften up. Going to put on some gloves and for the meat, just transfer it right onto the cutting board. You're going to see a couple different cuts of the brisket, the flat and the point. If it's just the flat part, there's really only fat on the top. If it's the flat and the point connected, you're gonna see a little bit of fat in the middle. I'm just gonna roughly chop them after removing the fat and don't worry about removing every piece of fat. Some of it is going to cook right into our chili. You also don't want huge chunks in there as well. So be mindful. Next, let's give it a quick stir. You can see that it's been boiling for a few minutes. Flavors are starting to infuse. We're in really good shape here. Let's add in our beef, which is going to add even more flavor to this, obviously. And then grab that crispy bacon bowl and add it in there as well. 
Be sure to stir everything together, get those flavors starting to marry, and then we're simply gonna turn the heat down to low and let it simmer. And now probably the most important part of this recipe is taking the time for those flavors to infuse and marry, and of course, to make sure the beans are finished. It's gonna take at least 60 minutes, but halfway through the cooking process, we are gonna come back, we're gonna taste it out, we're going to see if it needs anything more, like more chili powder, cumin, or oregano, even brown sugar, to make sure we get the flavors and seasonings just right. So it took actually 90 total minutes for the beans to become tender, for the flavors to infuse. I came back every 10 minutes and stirred it to make sure things were still moving around. So at this point, at the end, we want to season it well with salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Also going to hit it with a little Worcester sauce and some Tabasco sauce. Remember, season once, taste twice. Taste it, season it, see if it needs any more. All right, I don't want to lose you here. A half teaspoon of cinnamon and one ounce of dark chocolate. I know this probably is very crazy. I promise you the flavors are fantastic. You can see the color even starting to darken up from that chocolate. Do not skip this procedure. And I'm sure that probably threw you for a loop, but I promise the richness that comes from that chocolate and even just taking the time to season it and taste it. I can't say it enough. Seasoning is one of the most simple things you can do and absolutely one of the most beneficial. I always say it. What is a tomato without salt and pepper? Fine. What is a tomato with salt and pepper? Incredible, right? Take the time to do these things. All of these fundamental techniques, the caramelization of the onions just makes it that much better. All of these things put into practice will 100% elevate your everyday cooking. Now, really quick, if you want to use canned beans like I suggested at the beginning, you finish with those. They're already cooked to death. You don't want them to be mush. You add them in at the end just to heat them up. All right, let me show you how to plate this up. Adding a big old heaping scoop to a very large bowl. Going to just drizzle on some sour cream for some nice fat here. Next, I've got some tortilla chips that I just crunched up in my hands, adding a little texture there. And then I decided to cube some extra sharp cheddar instead of shredding it because, well, why not? Then I'm slicing up some green onions and oh my gosh, you are gonna die when you taste how flavorful this is. Stick to the game plan and I promise you, you're gonna have delicious chili every single time. And if you love soup like me, I always said it was my first love and you absolutely have to check out my ham and bean. So good, I've got a great recipe video. I'll see you on there.